Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. A update has been released and a new DLC pack has been added to the Steam store and that is what we are going to be looking at for today. The survival video that would usually be on Friday will probably be later on today or perhaps tomorrow depending on how long this takes to finish editing and all that. So to start things off we're going to be looking at the new DLC because that is probably why you are on this video. The new DLC pack is a little bit more expensive than the first one, being about £2 more than the block pack, despite this only containing cosmetic items. So going into the medical bay, we can see the two new skins that get added with this pack. There are two more skins that were also released with this update, but they are not included with the DLC. So we have the chef outfit, so switching that on and turning my colour back to default, this is what we get. So we get a nice plain black body bit, we've got some stripes going all the way across it. It's not too bad really, not too bad if we add in some colour. It looks a lot better, these new suits look a lot better with colour than they do with the plain white. Then we can come across to the tools, let's find the uh, chef welder. Which is that there? So we've got these little dots on the handle, we've got little stripes going across it which is the theme. The grinder, once again we get dots on this little part here, we've got then more stripes, I'll go into first person shortly after this. We've got the chef drill, so here's the drill there. And then we've got the rifle, right here. So coming out of that, let's just okay that and look from it in a first person perspective. So the magazine has got little holes on it, we've got little stripes on it, looking at it from a aiming down the sight view, we do have some low quality textures on there which I'm not too happy about. I have tried putting up the graphical settings but it makes no difference. Coming across to the welder, so this is the welder, got the holes in the handle, relatively well done. We then have the grinder, so actually I want to turn that off so I don't destroy my base. Here is the grinder, again it's Pretty decent. I do think the resolution for the patterns is a bit too low for what it is. Last but not least, we have the uh, drill. So this is the drill. We can see the vents on it. And if I look down, yeah, they're all right for what they are. It's a shame we can't color the tools. I just come into here and color them. It's kind of annoying. But then we have another suit that came with it. So hiding my duplicates, there's too many in here. We have the proper suit. Let's get rid of my color and equip the proper suit. It looks alright really, it's not the greatest thing in the world to shout from the rooftops, I much prefer things like the like lava suit or the glamour suit and all that, but if I was to add colour, it looks alright with colour, especially the pinks, it looks very good with pink. So that's it all the way around, it looks alright. And without any suits on, this is like the default Space Engineers suit for comparison, so it does add a bit more. Coming across to the tools, we can then find the proper welder. Not much going on there, it just looks like a lot of black, I'll probably have to come into first person for these ones. We then have the proper grinder. Now that looks nice. And then we have the proper drill. Looks alright. And the proper rifle, where are you? There you are. So again, coming out of there and looking first person, here is the proper rifle. Aiming down the sight, we don't see any hideous textures. Looking down, it actually looks quite nice, I like this rifle. And then we can come across to the welder. The welder doesn't look like anything special really, it's got a nice handle on it but that's about it. The grinder, again nothing too special, it's just a very clean design. And the drill, last but not least, again a clean design. I could probably see myself using this one, although I do like the glamour tools a lot better. So that's that for the actual outfits and what you get cosmetic wise for the engineer, but there is a few other things we get with the pack. So we get the clean armour which is given to everyone as part of the default, but with the DLC pack we get the digital camouflage and the carbon fibre armour. So what I need to do now is come outside to this lovely Gretbit wall give you a small demonstration. So this right here is the standard Space Engineers block work. It's got some wear and tear on it, it's got some dirt on it, 
and yeah, it's just what we're used to. But then we have the clean armor, which was given to everybody for free. Let's just go and throw this in. So it does exactly what you expect. It gets rid of all the wear and tear, gets rid of all the dirt, and makes it nice and clean. Part of the DLC pack, though, you get the digital camouflage armor. So let's just go and place this in. There we go. It's a bit slow loading in, but this is the texture we get. It's quite nice from a distance. It's a bit of extra flavor to the blocks. It's kind of like Imperial on how you can change the textures of your blocks and multiple different things to basically spice it up from being a plain block. And then last but not least, we have the carbon fiber. I will do different colors in a minute, but yeah, this is the carbon fiber. There we go. Can't really see it, but as we get closer, you can see it there. So if I just go like that, so my left is the carbon fiber and the right is the regular vanilla blocks, it does add a bit. From a distance, it just lo looks a little bit darker. It's the digital camouflage that really sticks out. But let's now just switch to white and we're going to paint the whole grid. So painting the whole grid, it looks all right, doesn't it? It sort of removes a lot of the edges on the blocks and makes it quite clean actually, very clean. And going up against it, it kind of reminds me of a carpet. I hate to say it, it doesn't look like metalwork, it looks like a carpet. Let's try some bright greens in here. And yeah, I mean, going along like this, it still looks like a carpet to me unfortunately. Let's grab the digital camouflage, throw that in. So yes, it just basically puts in some dark blotches everywhere to mix it up a bit. Let's go for this hideous pink color I found. Yep. And then we can do some white. White looks okay. What about the black? Again, black looks pretty good. And then let's try and find a nice a dark green to match my environments. It looks, it looks all right. I like the digital camouflage and I like the carbon fiber. They're kind of the best part of the entire pack really because they add a lot more flavor to a ship so you don't have to go out of your way using different blocks, half finished blocks to make your ship look good. You can now use different coats of paint. And then, and then, and then, there's, there's a little bit more, oh yes. So I've talked about the two new suits that come with this pack. I've talked about the two new block patterns and the one free block pattern that everybody gets. But now it's time to talk about the emotes. Oh yes, they've added in some emotes into the game. So I'm just going to land up here and turn myself around. We get 10 new emotes to use. And this is another part of why I wanted to get it. Because you get a dance emote. Yes, but let's start with the first thing, which is angry. You are angry. You throw your hands up in the air in frustration and stomp your feet. Let's look at that again. There you go. You're very angry. You're trying to dismiss it, but it's just too angry for you. Great. Looking at it from the side. In fact, we just turn all the way around. There you go. That is the angry emote. And then we get number two. The dancing emote. You do a little jig on the spot. Yeah, it's pretty good. I wish it would last longer or there's the option of looping it. Yeah, we just keep going around and around. Looks all right. From first person, if I could just get up. First person, you don't really see much. You just see a hand occasionally. It's kind of like the angry emotes. You just don't really see much. Let's just try crouch dancing. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, look at the little foot go in the back there. Uh, let's, throw in the, let's throw in the angry. You are angry, but you are crouching. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. I like the dancing emote. You can have a lot of fun with this. Then we get the hold up. So if you weren't using your microphone and you wanted to tell your friend to hold up, now you can and protect your base from being destroyed. The next one is come on, move along. Move along, please move along. And yeah, that's what you do in first person. You can sort of see what's going on here. It's a bit off center. And then we got the stop. 
Again, it's a bit off center, but hey, they might fix it. You can do have the dance and like, move along, please, move along while dancing. Yes, you can sort of glitch it a bit to combine the stuff so we can have while he's dancing. Please stop. There we go. Please stop while I'm dancing. You lot can come along now. And all that. Tab number two, we get the pointing emotes. So number one, we point left. Yes, point over there. You want the goods to be dropped over there. Then we can point right with a separate button. Yes, I want the goods. Fat. Oh, you can press them both at the same time. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, from a first person perspective, you can't see any of this. We then need to point forwards. So pointing forwards in first person. We can sort of see if we look down. So I want to point forwards over there. So you can point there. If I was to say aim up a bit and then do that. Yeah, it's relatively in line of where you are aiming, where you're pointing. And then we have number five. Behind you. So you're pointing behind you. Thumbs a little bit off. But you get the idea. It's like, where do you want this cargo boss? I wanted it behind me. Somewhere around there. That'll do. First person view. Again, we can't see anything from the first person view. And then we have number seven, which is down. You want the goods to be right here at your feet. Pointing down. And then number eight is similar, except instead of pointing where you want the goods to go down, you want to throw down. You and me right now, right here. So there you go. You, me, right here, right now. We're going to a battle to the death. And yeah, that is what you get with the DLC packs. We get some nice emotes. I still like the dancing. Let's just do that while crouching. Oh no, I've created a monster here. Ah, looks it. It's good old Space Engineers clunkiness. That is what we get with the pack. So we get two skins, two textures, and a 10 emotes. So what do I think of the DLC pack and should you buy it? Well, it's really up to you. Do you like what you've just seen in this video? Do you like the emotes? Do you like the new textures? Do you like the new suits? If yes, then sure is fine. If you couldn't care less about the new textures or any kind of the skins, then well, you could easily pass it. There is nothing in this pack that will restrict you from using any kind of workshop blueprints, or at least I hope they don't do that. Cause I mean, the textures over here might be a problem, but I highly doubt it because they're the only things that could restrict you from using certain workshop blueprints if they really wanted to go that far. But as far as I'm aware, it doesn't matter. So this DLC can be ultimately avoided if you do not wish to buy it. First one, you kind of have to, because there's a few ships that are built around them and would fall apart without the block pack. So yes, it's if you like what you see, if you like the skins, if you want some more variety with your block work, then yeah, this pack is pretty good. And if you like the emotes just to mess around with, you, with your friends, then yeah, I think it's kind of worth it. But what else came with the update? I'm not going to go through everything like bug fixes. I'm just going to go to the important stuff, like a small block cryopod. Yes, yeah, so this thing over here is the Diddy version of the cryopod over here. They have similar sizes, and I kind of wish this would be also a big block one, because it looks so much better. So this is the vanilla cryopod, with the digital camo on it, going inside and looking down. Yeah, it's just a cryopod, isn't it? And then we have this thing. This is the new small block cryopod that everybody gets for free with the update. Going inside, we get this nice glass effect. Looking down and across. Yeah, we can't really see much going on in here. But it still looks good, doesn't it? It looks like a drop pod. Something you would attach thrusters to and drop yourself out of a ship to go to a planet. Let's get a better look at it. So around the side there, we've got some high voltage stuff. We've got some more danger signs. We've got two connection points going underneath it. So accidentally dropping the cryopod on the floor, this is the back of it. So we get these nice little dots on them. I'm not sure why they're there. We generally wouldn't see them, but we do have a connection point on the back. We have two connection points underneath. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I really like this cryopod. The next thing and the last thing is something relatively useful actually. So pressing G, we bring up all our blocks for us to build. But now we have a build planner. So if you wanted to build a vehicle very quickly or just slap together a small ship, you can do. 
You can ignore your light armoured blocks and all that because you don't need to worry about that, they're just steel plates. But we can be like, okay, so I want to choose the wheel, right? I want to choose a wheel. I want to have a small block wheel, so I'm going to select this up here for a small block. And now I'm just going to add in four wheels. So these four wheels here are now ready. What else do I need for a vehicle? A cockpit. So let's show and drag a cockpit in there. Next, I'm going to need a passenger seat. And last but not least, I'm going to need a small reactor. There we go. I've just dragged and dropped. If you want a big reactor, you can just select that and drag it across. That's all good. So now I've got all them ready, I can now come across to my assembler. So coming across to my assembler over here, I can now enter it and click this button over here. This button adds all components from the build planner to the build queue. Clicking it, boom. Coming over to productions, it's now queued up all the materials I need to build everything I just queued up. Of course, ignoring steel blocks because you could just, well, basically do that and spam a load of steel plates and you're good to go. So that is one way of being more lazier than having to remember what you need to build. So instead of going like, mm, I kind of need to have that many motors, maybe that many, that many, that many, that many, and doing a lot of guesswork, you can now do precisely what you need for your vehicle. If I come over to my container now, we have a few new options. We have this, withdraw components for build planner. So I can press this button here and it'll withdraw as much of the resources as possible for you to build what you need to do. So what I've done here is clicked it, it's pulled out all the resources for the stuff I have queued up in my build planner over here. And as you can see, it still needs one interior plate for that and one steel plate for the reactor. So they have not left the build planner, but the wheels, the cockpit have all gone because I have got the materials for them. So if I was to come across to here and maybe hit that again, I've now withdrawn the steel plate and interior plate, so if I come over to my build planner, it is now empty because I am ready to build the wheels, the cockpit, the seat, the reactor, and go on my way. So it's a really useful thing if you want to quick build some simple designs. Now you probably saw there were a few other options here, so we have to deposit all ores, ingots, and components. So what this will do if I'm in another container is move everything into this container. Yes, so if you want to quick move everything into one large cargo container from all your tiny little containers, you can now do that by going into the large cargo container and just pressing that button. It'll pull everything out of the refineries, everything out of the reactors and all that and shove it all into the container, but then everything will be pulled out naturally by the refineries and all that by themselves. So it is really useful if you were to unload a ship into a base. It saves a lot of time manually dragging stuff. It's really good. So yeah, I really like that. That's really useful, especially for large mining ships. So you can just deposit everything you've just done into one large cargo container. And that is it for this video. So the DLC itself is quite nice for those who want to have a bit more flavor while playing the game with their skins and textures. And the new update itself is a lot more quality of life stuff, which is damn useful in the long run. So hopefully this video has been helpful and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.